morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Aaron Walton, the 13th president of the historic Cheney University of Pennsylvania. And it's my distinct honor to welcome each of you to today's event. Cheney University holds a unique position within the American higher education community. It was established in 1837 through a request of Richard Humphreys, a Philadelphia Quaker who wished to see young people of African descent have access to education. The challenge remains today, 187 years later. One of the most significant barriers to post-secondary education is cost. We live in an age where employment while attending college for a large majority of our students is an imperative resulting from many adverse circumstances and family situations. I can personally relate to this challenge, having been the last of 12 children, a lot of kids, <laughs> with parents having a second and eighth grade education respectively. Clearly a first generation college student along with several of my siblings. One who also had to work full time all four years of my undergraduate education. Today, we are being presented with an opportunity to live out the theme of Maya Angelou's poem, And Still We Rise, mm -hmm. a demonstration of resilience, empowerment, and overcoming obstacles. The poem celebrates the speaker's ability to rise above difficulties and societal expectations, emphasizing the dignity and strength of marginalized people. Governor Shapiro's and the bipartisan legislators unwaving commitment to investing in our students and institutions is a beacon of hope and progress, especially for historically black colleges and universities like Cheney. This significant investment not only acknowledges the vital role that HBCUs play in shaping future leaders, but also ensures that we can continue to provide an exceptional education to our deserving students. We celebrate this remarkable achievement and look forward to boundless opportunities it will create for our community and beyond. And while I'm here, let me thank and welcome some of our dignitaries, Senator Vincent Hughes, <laughs> Drum, <laughs> Representative Jordan Harris, Senator John Kane, <laughs> Representative Amara, <laughs> Representative Mary Isingson, <laughs> Representative Craig Williams, <laughs> Commissioner Josh Maxwell, <laughs> Commissioner Marion Moskowitz, <laughs> Ryan Boyer, I chair. Pastor Marshall Mitchell, and Councilman Richard Womack of Delco. Thank you all for being here, and now we'll hear from our secretary. Thank you. Thank you so much, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am uh, Secretary Dr. Khalid Mumin, and I am thrilled to be here today to celebrate these investments in higher education here in the Commonwealth. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Our HBCUs, like Cheney, produce nearly 20 percent of all African-American college students or college graduates and nearly 25 percent of all African-American STEM graduates. So it's critical that we invest in our colleges as they prepare today's learners for tomorrow's jobs. Now, under Governor Shapiro's leadership, we are making progress for the first time in decades. And that entails building and investing in a stronger, higher, 
education system to meet Pennsylvania's needs long term and make education more affordable for more students. And we are coordinating every sector of higher education and ensure that it meets critical workforce needs and serves as an economic driver for Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Together, we can make an impact on learners today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. So again, thank you, Governor Shapiro, for your leadership. And thank you to our legislators for their collaboration and leadership. And thank you to the great graduates and prospective graduates of our HBCUs because they are truly being prepared for an ever-changing future. So thank you so much. It is my pleasure to bring to the podium Representative Williams. Thank you. I am Representative Craig Williams and welcome to the 160th District where you are right now. Um, it is my great pleasure to be the representative for Cheney University. Um, and I should also note that I am the Republican up here. And I, and, I, and, I, and I want you to know why I point that out to you. Because it took many of us to cross the aisle, number one, to get this budget done, and number two, to make education a priority in this budget and agree with people like Chairman Harris, who um, graciously allowed the education issue from my Republican caucus to be a central theme of this budget, which I think brought over dozens of Republican votes when we eventually passed this budget. I am grateful for this bipartisan atmosphere, especially on this issue. For me, this was the issue that got my yes vote. This was it. If you wanted to give me a win back home in my district, it was HBCUs, Cheney University, scholarships for, um, for students that would reduce their cost of education. We know that if you make cost prohibitive going to college, they won't go. One of the other things that we did was to try to reduce the brain drain in Pennsylvania. And by that, I mean giving them opportunities to find education pathways to serve Pennsylvania. Cheney has one of the leading programs right here that is making contact with Chester County businesses to try to help students understand what our local needs are in terms of college educated graduates. That's how you lead. And it takes money. We got, I think, half a million dollars in this year's budget for Cheney. Uh, we got $6,000 per year for students to get those scholarships. We've also started programs to incent people to study in areas where we need people in Pennsylvania. But we're not done fighting. Mm -hmm. I know the caucus behind me right now would agree. We're not done fighting when it comes to education in Pennsylvania. This is the doorstep for everything we need. Building our economy, safer streets, opportunity in Pennsylvania bringing businesses to Pennsylvania, reducing tax burden because we have more wealth. It all starts with education. So thank you so much for coming to my district. Governor, thank you for being here. I know you have a little bit on your plate right now. Um, we're so grateful that you, you would take time for this. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to another fellow Delaware County representative, Representative Jennifer O'Mara. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jennifer O'Mara, and I am a state representative from Delaware County. So I am thrilled today to be here to celebrate the passage of the budget, the investments that we made in public education and higher education, and the bill signing for a piece of legislation that includes legislation that I have been working on. As a legislator, since I've been in Harrisburg, I have worked on the Student Debt Caucus, founding and caucus that didn't exist because I graduated from a school in Pennsylvania with the average amount of debt that a student graduates with, around $40,000. That's too much and it is prohibitive for so many. I'm also thrilled to be here today because I am a member of the FIA Board of Directors and I know firsthand the impact that we are going to make on students who rely on the FIA grant so they can attend school. I know that creating a grant program that's going to help and support disadvantaged students is going to create opportunities who, for kids who need them. And I'm also thrilled to be here today because I am a PASHI graduate. I graduated from Westchester University right down the street. 
We did a lot to in coordination, coordination with Cheney. I also went to school to be a teacher, so I was a student teacher. I remember having to work a full-time job while student teaching. It was one of the hardest times in my life because you weren't allowed, you didn't get paid. You had no compensation for being a student teacher. And this is going to, this is going to continue to invest in the stipends we've already created. And lastly, I'm thrilled to be here because I'm a first-generation college student. I lost my dad. Oh, thank you. Very exciting. I lost my dad when I was 13 years old. I was raised by a single mom from the city of Philadelphia. The fact that I stand here before you today alongside the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the chairs of appropriations in the House and the Senate, as an elected official is truly remarkable and only possible because of my education, my public and higher education. And so I thank you all for understanding and recognizing that this budget needed to include this investment and for allowing me to be a small part of this amazing celebration. Thank you. I now would like to um, introduce my friend and colleague, Representative Mary Isaacson. Thank you. And this is a great day. It's a day to celebrate where we're making overdue investments in higher education here in Pennsylvania. And there are so many distinctive investments and reforms to celebrate in this bill. This new law, which we're here to sign today, makes a payment, a down payment on public higher education. And we are only getting started. This is only a starting point. While the new board will work to bring stakeholders together, this law will also enable our public higher education systems to make more accessible and affordable to those looking for training and career paths. Dual enrollment in this bill will create a new and simplified path for students to earn college credits with support services provided to a larger population who may not have ever been able to benefit from it in the past. This law also calls for articulation um, credits, acceptance across all of our public higher education systems, making a four-year degree more affordable, as well as creating easier transfers and transitions for students. English 101, now is the same no matter where you get it, mm -hmm. whether it be a community college or a PASHI institution. The, the new recording requirements will make it easier for the board to collect data and to make sure we are meeting the needs of the students and the needs of our current and future workforce. And as a board member of FIA, I saw the wild success of the student teacher stipend program last year sold out in one day, <laughs> maybe an hour or two. <laughs> and I'm happy this year that we doubled down on that and um, trying to get more teachers into the pipeline to address the uh, teacher shortage we have here in Pennsylvania and make sure that we are paying student teachers for their valuable time. And thank you to everybody who worked on this legislation. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership in this. And it is my honor to introduce Senator John Kane. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, so I'm everybody. Senator John Kane, and welcome to the 9th Senatorial District, which encompasses parts of Delaware County and also Chester County, like Cheney University. What an honor it is to be back in our nation's first and most historic HBCU, right here in the 9th District. Not too long ago, I had the pleasure of touring this iconic campus, learning about its rich history and meeting the wonderful folks who make this place so special. During that visit, I made a promise to Cheney, its board, the staff, and its incredible students. We would make real investments and bring real opportunities to this university. Today, I am proud to say that we have a historic state budget that fulfills that promise. We have investments in higher ed, investments in our current and future educators, and we have key policies that will enhance the level of education our students are getting. We also have a governor, and hopefully future VP, <laughs> That's right. 
who not only shares a powerful vision for education in our commonwealth, but has taken concrete steps to elevate our schools to the level they deserve. Now, I used to be a plumber, so I'll leave all the big budget numbers to our governor, but let me say this. Cheney has no doubt faced his fair share of challenges, as pioneers often do, but Cheney has never, ever stopped pushing forward. That's right. The future here is bright, and Cheney students continue to be in excellent hands are a credit and beautiful HBCU. Thank you. And now, it's my distinguished honor to introduce Majority Chair Representative Jordan Howard. Thank you, Senator. All right. What is it still? Good, at, good morning, Cheney. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on. It's, it's an HBCU. We all, I know, we grew up in the black church. We know callers. and stuff. Let's try this again. Good morning, Cheney. Good morning. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, praise the Lord. All right. Um, <laughs> listen, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to be here on the campus of Cheney University, the nation's first historically black college and university, founded in 1837. Um, the university that many follow, Many have tried to emulate and imitate, mm -hmm. uh, but the best, the brightest, and the, uh, the first to do it. It is always a pleasure to be uh, with my governor, uh, Governor Shapiro. Glad to be here with you, and thank you for all of the work that we did together to get this uh, budget done. So glad to see all of the media. I'm so glad you all came to see me today. <laughs> you can answer all their questions. <laughs> But no, but but seriously, this is this is um, a, a great um, day for us uh, here in the Commonwealth. Uh, this was a good budget, and I've said this time and time again. I've been in the legislature for six terms, and I've voted on several budgets in the past. But this was the first time that I could honestly say I am proud of the budget that we passed. I am proud of the things that are included in this budget. And what we're here today to celebrate um, is a big part of that. For those that don't know, Cheney University is not just an HBCU. It is not just a member of the state system of higher education. Cheney University is the conscience of the black community in Pennsylvania. Cheney University is the place where many of our best and brightest have been educated, trained, motivated, and have gone on to be successful. People like Octavius Cato, who if you go to the city of Philadelphia, there's a statue in his honor, a black man who was killed registering people to vote, a black man who was uh, very instrumental in making sure that people that look like me have the right to vote in this country. People like Julian Abel, who was a architect. A lot of folks don't talk about Julian Abel, but Julian Abel lived actually in part of my district, which is now called Black Doctors Row. Uh, if you look at the art museum, if you look at the free library, you're looking at Julian Abel's work. If you look at people like Baynard Rustin, uh, civil rights leader, guess where Baynard Rustin was educated, reared, and got his identity here at Cheney University. When you watched 60 Minutes and you saw that guy, Ed Bradley, well, you didn't know it at the time, but you were looking at one of Cheney University's best, brightest, and finest. And whenever you get that Philadelphia Tribune, don't forget about our friend and one of Cheney's biggest, biggest cheerleaders, uh, Bob Bogle, or um, one of uh, 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 another one of our big uh, uh, cheerleaders for Cheney, Brother Sam Patterson. Listen, I say these names, I say these names, not just for shout outs and pur for purposes, but you have to understand the lineage and the heritage of the ground that you stand on today. I would say to you today that for many of us, it is sacred ground. It is hollowed ground. Right here at Cheney University, some of the sharpest minds in America were educated. For a very long time, if you were a school teacher in the Philadelphia school district and in school districts around Philadelphia, you were educated right here at Cheney 
University. So let me, you know, please, ma'am, please, sir, let me just take a moment in time for us to recognize why this budget matters. See, these aren't just dollars and cents. They aren't just lines on the paper, but it is the future of the Commonwealth. When a teacher stands in front of a young person and that teacher is able to ignite the mind of that young people, uh, ignite the inquisitive nature of a young person, that teacher sets that young person on fire. And once that fire begins to burn, you can never shut it off. But that teacher is typically educated here at Cheney University. So, yes, it's a 6% increase. Yes, Pashi has frozen tuition again for years in a row. That You know, that you can plan for that. That's good. But understand something. It's not just the money, but it's what the money represents. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania will have no future if we don't invest in our young people. And I would submit to you, black America would have no future without places like Cheney University, all right? So I'm grateful today to be here with all of you, and I'm grateful to stand with my governor, who gets it, who understands, who doesn't have to be convinced about why these investments matter. He's been a true partner in our work to invest in what I consider our most valuable asset in Pennsylvania, and that is our young people. So um, this is a start. We got more work to do. We have more investments to make. We have more people to inspire, more young people, like the one you're going to hear from, to make sure we, we can't tell these young people, right, that they need to go to school and do the best. And that, if we're not going to put the resources there so that when they do what we ask them to do, we need to take care of the rest, okay? You can't tell them that education is to elevate out of poverty and then give them a broken elevator. You got to make sure it's maintained and that it's working. All right? So that's why we're here today to celebrate this historic investment because we know that the young people that leave this hollow ground will make history one way or the other. It's my privilege to introduce my friend, uh, the uh, chairman of appropriations on the other side of uh, the building. State Senator Vincent Hughes. Good job. Good job. Give Chairman Harris another round of applause, please. Do that. All right. Look at Mike McGuire over there. All right. Let's do it like this. We are at Cheney University. What do we do? See you. See you. Oh, no, 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 no. See you. See you. See you. See you. That's much better. All right. So you got a lot of uh, great minds who are uh, up here and, and, yeah. and making speeches and doing stuff like that. But it don't happen, Governor, you know how this works. It doesn't happen without some serious, hardworking staff to get all the points together and get them all on paper and make sure the numbers add up. I got to give a shout out to uh, my chief counsel, Michael Deary, who you have the opportunity to meet because she's going to be interning for me, Governor. Oh, good. <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right. Michael Deary is here. Mike, Mike is here. Thank you, Michael. Tony Machowski, our, our, just two representatives of all of the staff, yeah. all of the staff who have been involved in this process um, uh, to make a, a difference. So two years ago, uh, it was a different campaign season, and we sat down with the governor. Ryan, you may remember this conversation. And we talked, we sat down with the gentleman who wanted to be governor, um, and we had this conversation. And we talked about the importance of Cheney University and Lincoln University, mm -hmm. and the fact that these two of the oldest, and I know you're hearing a lot about Howard University, and I. Appropriately so. Appropriately so. Appropriately so. Okay. <laughs> See what an HBCU can do for you. All right. All right. See what an HBCU can do for you. Uh -huh. But but the 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 first were right here in Pennsylvania. That's right. That's right. And we talked about how we need to escalate and increase 
not just the support, but also the visibility and these historic cultural landmarks um, that have had footprint not just in Pennsylvania, but all across the country, in fact, all across the world. Uh, and we had that conversation, mm -hmm. and it was a long conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but our governor has listened, and he's delivered. He has delivered. Uh, his first commencement speech, I believe, was at Lincoln University. Correct. All yeah. right? Uh, and I don't know, President Walton, what you got planned for commencement this time, but, you know, I'm sure he, <laughs> I'm sure he might be available, all right? All right? If you ask now, okay, because, you know, things can change, all right? All right? <laughs> we get to plug in now, all right? You know. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, man. Let's I'm move sorry. on. You just, all right? You just open it up for that, man. You know what can I say? But the important thing is that in, in addition to acknowledging the importance of this university and our sister university down the road, um, the governor was all, has also been strategic in making sure that we put the environment together to make those successes mean something more. There's been a lot of talk about our historic investments in basic education this year. A lot of talk about that. You know, over $1.1 billion of, of new investment, especially going to higher, to K through 12 schools that have historically been locked out and left out. But if you don't make the investment in higher education, you really can't respond to what you've done in K to 12. Mm -hmm. And so what we did with the governor's challenge to us, and he challenged the legislature on February 6, 2024, he challenged the legislature to step up and do something different in higher education, and that is what we have done. We talk about the investments, a dramatic investment in Keystone Honors, a dramatic new investment in the Bond Hill Scholarship Program. I know you like those. I know you like those, all right? I know you like those, which I think you're going to be taking advantage of, all right? Okay? Uh, dramatic investments all across the board, campus investment, infrastructure investment, a call across the campus. You like that, Ryan? Okay? All right? And wonderful things that are going on, but it's been strategic, it's been thoughtful, it's been purposeful, and he has led us to rise to the occasion. Transparency in your higher education experience. You'll be able to know coming into a university all the costs you're going to have to deal with uh, for those four years. And you'll know with counseling when you leave, when you graduate the university, everything that's on the table. You would think that that would be automatic, but that's not the case. So we had to make sure that that was in the legislative package. So all of that is part of this. Uh, and we're glad. Chairman Harris, you know, you and I started out about four or five years ago with the PA Promise. That's right. Okay? Uh, which was all about the pathway to free and affordable college. Mm -hmm. We have finally gotten it done. And thank thankfully, we've gotten it done with Governor Josh Shapiro pushing us to make sure it happens. And, of course, the student teacher stipend program, where we've Double from ten million to twenty million dollars. So maybe it, maybe it, it takes two days to to, to, for, to to utilize all of that. But making sure that we do maybe the most important thing, which is invest in in our teachers, because without teachers, none of this none of this is possible. And for someone, if I can introduce to you now, someone who obviously listened to some very very good teachers, and she is she is on her way into her senior year. And we're going to make, try to do our best to make it as smooth as possible for her, all right, so that she can graduate, go to law school, then, and then be the inspiration for other young people to, in fact, do the same, if you will. Please, John Kane, Delaware County, one of Delaware County's own, okay? Veronica Redden. Veronica? <laughs> Thank you to Senator Hughes. Good morning. My name is Veronica Redden. I'm a senior here at Cheney University. My journey began four years ago as I was filling out college applications. And if I can remember, it was a time of uncertainty as to how I was going to pay for the education I was seeking out. I had, I had schools I showed interest in and schools that showed interest in me, but none were offering the support me and my family were searching for. That is, until I got a call from the admissions office stating that I qualified for the Keystone Honor Scholarship, a full tuition scholarship. Right. The 
promise of a free education motivated me to not just attend, but excel during my time at Cheney. Looking back on my time here, I'm proud to say that I've been encouraged to take advantage of every opportunity that would open up for me. Opportunities to prioritize learning and growth without the worries of a tuition bill. It's the reason why I'm able to stand here today introducing Governor Shapiro as he signs this historic bipartisan budget, bridging more gaps than one. A budget that will provide students just like me with the support they need to pursue a higher education. Thank you. Let me begin by saying, uh, Veronica, this is why we do what we do That's right. for you. And I want you to know um, it's not just that you're an outstanding student. It's not just that you're dedicated to your craft of learning, but you're paying it forward in your community already doing an internship to strengthen your community in Delaware County yes. and doing work to help your fellow neighbor. You know, my faith teaches me no one is required to complete the task, but neither are we free to refrain from it. Mm -hmm. Each of us has a responsibility to get off the sidelines, get in the game and do our part. Veronica, you are doing your part and we are grateful to Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you for having me. I would note for the record um, a bit of a failure in your leadership because when Senator Hughes was introduced, the drum band played him on. When I was introduced, I got bupkis when I got up here. Come on, guys. Give me a little something. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we're, we're cheering on those... The new look Sixers is here. PG-13 is in town. Mr. President, um, thank you for your leadership. And, and you have had tests in your leadership, not just the daily tests of a university president, but a whole lot thrown at you. And we've been with you every step of the way, and you've been an outstanding leader for this university. We're proud to have your back. Thank you. <clears throat> the president knows he's only as good as the team around him, so let me give a shout out to the folks who represent that team around them, the great women and men of AFSME and APSCUF who are here doing great work at Cheney University every single day. <clears throat> We're grateful for the work you do and the way in which you stand up and make sure folks like Veronica get the best quality education, one of the finest institutions in America. As you know from Professor Jordan Harris, the new history professor here at Cheney University, <laughs> I assume you've figured out a way to sign that up. The chairman gave us an important history lesson, of course, noting that Cheney is the first HBCU in this nation. And it holds a special place in the history of this commonwealth and in the history of this country. The mark its graduates have left have been felt far and wide not just here in suburban Philly or in the city or in the Commonwealth, but indeed all across this country. Cheney's excellence has paved the way for generational efforts that have created meaningful change. For nearly two centuries, HBCUs like Cheney have helped ensure that the doors of opportunity are open to more people, that quality education is more accessible, especially for black Pennsylvanians especially for folks who have historically been denied the opportunity to pursue a college degree. And in the face of hard times, Cheney has remained resilient, continuing to make progress, while also remaining true to their legacy, true to who they are, as one of only two HBCUs in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. A legacy that really matters, and a legacy that we value here, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in the governor's office, in the legislature, and in both parties here in Pennsylvania. And so when our administration heard that Cheney's accreditation status was abruptly placed on probation last year, I want you to know we all went to work and we pushed back hard. And I personally lobbied from the Secretary of Education to others to make sure they re-looked at the decision that they made, the wrong decision that they made. And I want to give special thanks to this entire group up here, but especially to Chairman Hughes, who challenged all of us, who pushed all of us on this, and who ultimately 
was our partner in making sure that we, we reaffirmed Cheney's accreditation going forward. And so, with that behind us, today we get to stand up together and talk about the future of education in Pennsylvania and the future of a great quality education here at Cheney University for next generation of leaders like Veronica. Look, I firmly believe that every Pennsylvanian, no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love or who you pray to, you should have the freedom to chart your own course and the opportunity to succeed. And we recognize there's many paths to success after a great K-12 education. Some of our young people will go in the military. Some of them will go straight into the workforce. Some will enter a union apprenticeship program under the leadership of people like Ryan Boyer, the head of the Philadelphia Building Trades. And hear me on this. We need to respect all paths to opportunity right. and success. All paths to opportunity and success. And for those who choose to pursue opportunity in our college classrooms, well, we're making sure we are there for you. After 30 years of disinvesting from higher education, and because of that, playing a game of subtraction in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, subtracting resources, subtracting services, subtracting access. Well, as a result of that game of subtraction over three decades, enrollment declined and the cost of attending our colleges and universities has skyrocketed. But this group, this group understood instinctively that we needed to do better in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So my first budget address about a year and a half ago, I stood before bipartisan group of lawmakers in the General Assembly and said to them and the good people of Pennsylvania that we need to do something about this. We can no longer play that game of subtraction. Let's reimagine higher education together. How about we stop playing subtraction games and start playing games of addition in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? And so I directed our great Secretary of Education, Dr. Khalid Mumin, who stands tall behind us here today, and his amazing team at the Pennsylvania Department of Education to bring together higher education leaders, including your president, from all across Pennsylvania to have that meaningful conversation, to change that dynamic that's existed here for decades. He put his outstanding deputy, Secretary Kate Shaw, on the job, and under her leadership, The Department of Education listened to stakeholders, to students, to higher ed leaders, legislators, labor leaders, and so many more who have a stake in the success of a place like Cheney University. And with that feedback, we put forth a blueprint on how we could reimagine higher education, that we would reinvest in our colleges and universities. We would make college education more affordable, and hear me on this, more accessible to all Pennsylvanians and that we would increase coordination between our colleges and university. Thanks to the leadership of Chairman Harris in the House and Chairman Hughes in the Senate, and a bipartisan coalition that includes your legislators, Senator Kane, Representative Williams, Representative Isaacson, and O'Mara, they came together and folks put their best ideas on the table. And you know what we did? We did something that too many folks in politics don't do today. We listened to one another. And we compromised, and we found a path forward to success for higher education in Pennsylvania. And that, right there, what I'm about to sign, is the result. A budget that makes the first significant investment and reform in higher education in more than 30 years in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Let me tell you what we're doing. First, we're creating a state board of higher education to coordinate higher ed in Pennsylvania, collect real data about what's working and what's not, so the dollars can specifically follow what's working for our young people. We want to make sure our colleges and universities are all rowing in the same direction. This board is going to find real solutions to the problems in higher education and focus on tying the work that is happening in classrooms here at Cheney to the jobs we need all across Pennsylvania when folks graduate from this university. It's going to ensure that all of our colleges and universities serve now as economic drivers for progress in our communities all across Pennsylvania and give students more tangible opportunities for success 
when they graduate a great institution like Cheney. And number two, we are increasing our investment in PASHI schools, including Cheney University, and including in that increasing funds for our community colleges, which are so critically vital in communities all across Pennsylvania. The 6% increase is one thing, but this budget, this budget, as you heard from Chairman Harris before, this is a statement of our values, yes. of what we respect, of reflecting what we believe in. And we believe in high quality, affordable education for all in Pennsylvania. And we especially believe in our two HBCUs. This investment is critical so that we can preserve the pathway to opportunity all across Pennsylvania. And again, it's especially critical to our HBCUs. I have said many times from that private meeting I had with Ryan Boyer and Chairman Hughes to many times all across this Commonwealth, whether at an HBCU or not, that I'm committed to supporting in and investing in our HBCUs in a meaningful way as we reimagine higher education in Pennsylvania. Hear me on this. As we do this reimagination of higher ed, it's not just nice to invest in HBCUs. It is absolutely critical that we do that if we want to make sure we set up our higher ed system and its students for success. I have visited your friendly rival. In fact, you all got me in trouble when I was at Lincoln mm -hmm. a few months ago because I, I made the mistake of uttering the two words that they did not want to hear on game day. I said Cheney University about four hours before you all had a basketball game that night, and they kind of lit me up with some booze over at Lincoln. But I know it is, it is a friendly rival, and I know that we all want to support and lift up both HBCUs in Pennsylvania. But listen, our relationship with Cheney is very special and very particular. In addition to all the additional funding in the budget that's going to help lift up our colleges and universities, we have earmarked specifically two and a half million dollars for two scholarship funds specifically here at Cheney for Cheney students and Cheney alum who want to continue <laughs> who choose to continue their studies at a graduate program here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's money specifically earmarked to help our Cheney students get further ahead and to be able to realize their dreams. That is, of course, on top of the tens of millions of dollars in additional scholarships that we are making available to college students across Pennsylvania to make college more affordable. The first time we're making those types of investments in years, and I know that Representative O'Mara and the good folks uh, over at FIA will make sure that those dollars go far. And it's going to help us fill the positions that we need filled in order to benefit all Pennsylvanians. We're investing state dollars in that budget for nursing apprenticeships for the first time ever in Pennsylvania. And we saw how many people last year applied when we made student teacher stipends available for the first time ever. 4,000 of our fellow Pennsylvanians who want to go in the classroom and change lives, they applied for these student teacher stipends in just the first few hours that the website was open. We knew immediately we had to go and double down on that investment. And this budget does exactly that. And we're making sure that the doors of opportunity are open to anyone who wants to walk through. And my administration will continue to make that commitment to institutions like Cheney University who have their doors open up to all Pennsylvanians. Listen, here in Pennsylvania, we have shown that we can come together and get big things done get stuff done, the three letters that we live by in our administration, GSD. It should be lost on no one that we are the only state in the entire nation with a divided legislature. Think about that for a minute. In these hyper-polarized times, one chamber, the Senate, is led by Republicans, and the other chamber, the House, is led by Democrats. And notwithstanding how polarized these times are, notwithstanding that we are the only state in the nation with a divided legislature, we have shown an ability to come together to tackle big problems, to meet the moment, and to get big things done. We've learned how to give a little bit in order to get a little bit. And it's important that when we move the ball down the field, when we put some points on the board, that we come together, Republican and Democrat alike, and we celebrate that success. 
Because while I realize the word compromise can be a dirty word in some areas of our politics today, compromise is how you make progress for the good people of Pennsylvania. Compromise is how we get stuff done and how we tackle the big problems that we face today. I want you to know this is a big challenge, higher ed, that we are tackling. And as every speaker told you here today, this is a beginning. We've got a lot more work to do, and I'm committed to that work going forward. But understand, this isn't the only time that we've come together to solve a major challenge. Just last year, we were able to cut costs for seniors. For the first time in 20 years, we passed the largest targeted tax cut for seniors in nearly two decades. We passed the largest targeted tax cut for families with kids in childcare ever in Pennsylvania. We came together, Democrat and Republican alike, to put more money back in people's pockets as costs were rising. When the Commonwealth Court said that our K-12 system of education was not just broken, but was unconstitutional fundamentally for two reasons. Number one, we weren't investing enough. And number two, we weren't driving those dollars out to the school districts that need it most. Republican and Democrat came together. We had tough conversations, honest conversations. And the result of that is we invested a new $1.1 billion in public education in Pennsylvania. That number is unprecedented. And we not only made sure to invest in the bottom line of these school districts, every single kid going to a Pennsylvania school is getting universal free breakfast now. Mm -hmm. We listened to kids when they said to us that they were struggling with their mental health issues. And now we've invested $200 million just so we can hire more mental health counselors in our schools for our kids. When Chairman Hughes and others came and said, we got too many crumbling schools, not just in Philly, but in Reading and in Allentown and communities all across Pennsylvania, we create a fund for the first time ever with about a half a billion dollars in it to fix our crumbling schools. Democrats and Republicans solving problems. When Pennsylvania had the unfortunate distinction of being one of only two states in the entire nation that didn't fund indigent defense, didn't fund public defenders at the state level. You know what we did? We came together, Democrats and Republicans and alike, and invested in indigent defense. And by the way, at the same time, passed some of the most sweeping criminal justice reform bills in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We did that together. We have shown that we can tackle big things here in Pennsylvania. We have shown that notwithstanding the noise that exists in our politics today, we can find ways to come together and get stuff done. This is critically important for the good people of Pennsylvania, and I think this is a model for how government is supposed to work. And so I wanna close by saying a special thank you to all these lawmakers who are here today, who represent many other lawmakers who did this hard work of coming together, of having tough and honest conversations, of being willing to join us in challenging the status quo and making sure we delivered meaningful results for folks who most oftentimes have been left out of the conversation. I'm grateful to be back here at Cheney University. This is a place where we can learn a whole lot about making sure that all Pennsylvanians are heard from, all Pennsylvanians are listened to, and that we deliver for all of our fellow Pennsylvanians. Thank you all very, very much.
president, this is for you. You can cash his check here. All right? <laughs> That to the bank. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, you for yours. All right. Thank you, Thank you Governor. Thank Thank you. All right. Veronica, you want to answer these questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take some questions. Uh, from the media here. Do you expect uh, Kamala Harris to ask you to I'm, run? I'm happy to answer your question. Let me see if we got anything on Cheney, higher ed, or the budget. Really wish we had something from about Cheney or higher ed or the budget. Yeah. More about what you want the rest of the country to learn from what's going on in Pennsylvania. Look, I think, again, we're the only state in the nation with a divided legislature. And when you show up in a negotiation with Republicans and Democrats, they got strong feelings on things. That shouldn't surprise anybody. What we have learned to be able to do here is to not focus on the differences the parties might have, but the areas of commonality, the areas where we can row in the same direction. And I couldn't be more grateful to the leaders who are here, to Leader Bradford in the House, who was the primary negotiator in the House on the budget together with Chairman Harris, and to Leader Pittman in the Senate. We're grateful that they were able to find ways to move forward. And I think we could be a model for the rest of the nation where we can have our honest differences, where we can believe different things. We can be registered in different parties. We can vote for different candidates. Well, we can all come together and negotiate, recognizing we got a job to do for the good people of Pennsylvania. Governor, do you expect Kamala Harris to ask you to run with her, considering all your success here, sir? I think that's a question for the vice president. Governor you, Kibera, are you planning on meeting with Vice President Harris this weekend? I think any process questions like that should go directly to the Harris campaign. Governor, you said the last time you spoke to Vice President Harris was last Sunday. Yeah, is that still true? It is. If you're not going to the Hamptons this weekend, what are you doing instead? <laughs> Y'all think I'm going to tell you what I'm doing? Come on. Go ahead. In Philadelphia on Tuesday, by chance? Uh, I hope to be, yeah. Governor, I want to ask you about President Trump's comments. We're here at a very historically important HBCU, and the presumptive Democratic uh, presidential nominee, Kamala Harris, attended, of course, an HBCU Howard, too. That's right. As we stand here, what do you make of President Trump's attacks on her identity? Um, she's, he said, in his words, she only recently, quote, became black. Yeah, I, I think it's offensive. And it is more of the same from Donald Trump. He attacks other people based on what they look like or who they pray to, who they love, the way they were raised. He tries to divide Americans because, quite frankly, he struggles with uplifting all Americans. I think it shows a profound weakness in a leader when they can't sell themselves, but instead they got to attack other people. And attacking the identity of the vice president uh, is shameful and attacking the identity of the vice president doesn't at all reflect negatively on Vice President Harris, but shows a real insecurity about Donald Trump. Listen, this guy is nervous as hell to face Kamala Harris. He's already trying to back out of the debate. Did you notice that? Of Part of that is because he knows she's going to whoop him in the debate. She is a skilled prosecutor, a great communicator. But there's another reason why he doesn't really want to debate her and doesn't really want to have a conversation about the issues. And that is because he can't defend his record. He has a record of failure when he was president. I want you to think about this. When he was president, we had fewer jobs in Pennsylvania. We had less freedom and a whole lot more chaos when Donald Trump was in charge. And listen, Kamala Harris, what she proposes to do for this nation is uplifting. It is empowering, and it's going to help make sure we move all Pennsylvanians forward, from our HBCUs to our skyscraped center cities to our farmlands. And I must tell you that I've been traveling all around this Commonwealth, as you know, doing my job as governor and also making sure that I tell people about the Kamala Harris that I know and that I've known for the last 20 years. Folks are excited wherever I go, rural communities, suburban, urban communities. They're fired up. They're ready to go. And I think Donald Trump's attacks speak volumes about the kind of coward that he is, about his own failings, and say nothing about the great qualifications of the vice president. Governor, what do you think the vice president is looking for in a running mate? I think it's a good question for her. 
I think it is a deeply, deeply personal decision, one that she understands because she went through it uh, four years ago when then candidate Biden, our nominee Biden, uh, chose her. She is obviously uniquely aware of the importance of picking someone uh, who she can run with and win with and, of course, govern with. And I know she will make this decision, as she makes every decision, in the best interest of the American people. What do you think you bring to the ticket, Governor? If she, I think that's a question The process, her. I understand. But what do you think you I'm bring? I'm not going to engage in those kind of hypotheticals. That's a, that's a conversation Governor, for her here, question you, for her. The, the, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Inquirer is writing about a 1993 college article you wrote where you expressed skepticism about a two-state solution. I understand you do support a two-state solution now. Can you kind of just talk about that evolution? Something I wrote when I was 20? Is that what you're talking about? I was 20. Um, <laughs> look, I have said for years, years, long before October 7th, um, that I favor a two-state solution. Uh, Israelis and Palestinians living peacefully side by side being able to determine their own futures and their own destinies, being able to work as they want and worship as they want and understand the power of living peacefully side by side and how that will lift up both parties in this or both sides of this conversation. This is obviously a very challenging situation and has been for hundreds if not thousands of years. Uh, it is my hope that we can see a day where peace will reign in the Middle East, where there will be a two-state solution, where all leaders involved in the conversations will respect the other side uh, and show a willingness to make the hard choices to find peace. And I hope that the U.S. government will always be a partner in peace and trying to find a path forward uh, in, uh, in the Middle East. Governor, do you think the Israelis... I think she had a question. Go, go ahead. Do you think the Israelis attack, uh, uh, killing, assassination of two leaders this week, one in Iran, one in Beirut, were proper? I think that's a question for the national security team who has a lot more information on the circumstances surrounding that. Do you, think that you need me to hook you up with an interview with somebody else here, Cole? You keep asking me questions that aren't for me. Who's here, Governor? Go ahead. Do you think if Vice President Harris picked someone, anyone from Pennsylvania to be her running mate, that would help them win the state. You're, you're really, you're like, I'm not, I'm not doing the hypothetical game. The vice president has a deeply personal decision to make. She will make the right decision for her and for the country. Governor, would you accept the job? Got okay. something. Will you be attending Harris's rally on Tuesday? I hope to be, yeah. Governor, would you accept the job if Vice President I'm Harris... I'm not going to engage in these hypotheticals. The Vice President's going to make the decision she wants to make. Governor, I know it feels like ancient history now, but after the debate between President Joe Biden and former President Trump, voters still have questions about the President's mental fitness. Um, do you, when you talk to him and, and see him recently, do you think that he's still going to be able to get the job done? Do you have any concerns that he slips at all? Not at all. And, and I've been in regular contact with the President. I will tell you that after the tragedy in Butler, uh, the assassination attempt of the former president, uh, bullets that left Corey Copperator dead and two other of our fellow Pennsylvanians injured and changed the lives of so many families, um, sadly, for, for so long. Uh, it was President Biden uh, who spoke to me um, that evening. I believe it was multiple times that evening. He was on top of that, on top of so many other things. I'm grateful for the president's partnership. I was grateful that he reached out to me just moments after he decided to end his campaign. Uh, and I think his ability to do the job is unquestioned, certainly in my mind, and his ability to uh, carry us forward as a nation and do big things over his remaining months in office, I think is something that um, you know should offer comfort to the American people. Take a look at what he accomplished that was announced just yesterday freeing three hostages mm -hmm. from Russian prisons. That's right. That took time to put that together. That took a determined president of the United States who has strong alliances around the world to be able to pull that together. And these three Americans, the American people, are better off because of his leadership. I'm grateful for the investments that the president continues to send our way in Pennsylvania. The I-83 Southbridge in uh, Harrisburg, 200,000 cars and trucks go over it every day. It's been years of people talking about fixing it. President Biden figured out a way to get us the resources to do that. 
We are poised to be the center of the clean energy universe for decades to come in Pennsylvania because President Biden saw to it to study the issue and make sure that we here in Pennsylvania would be home to not one, but the only state with two high regional hydrogen hubs in our nation. So many good things are happening here in Pennsylvania because of the president's willingness and ability to do this job to support our fellow Pennsylvanians. Last question. Governor, J.D. Vance just said this about you, and these are his words, quote, he compared you to a really bad impression of Barack Obama. What is your response to that? <laughs> is that what he said? That's great. I love how we get the real-time quotes here. I mean, look, I, I don't know. <laughs> Barack Obama was probably our most gifted orator of my time, so I, it's kind of a weird insult, I guess. But look, I'll say this about J.D. Vance. It is real hard being honest with the American people when you're not being honest with yourself. J.D. Vance is a total phony baloney. He is the most inorganic candidate I think I have ever seen on the national stage. He doesn't know what he believes, and that is why it is impossible for him to articulate a coherent message to the American people, because he doesn't believe it. This guy is not exactly off to a good start, and it is clear that Donald Trump uh, really has buyer's remorse with his pick. So if he wants to sling insults in my direction, which I'm not even sure is an insult, let him do it. That's fine. Bring it on. I'll be ready for whatever the hell J.D. Vance throws my direction. Thanks, everybody.